There is a fifth dimension, beyond sobriety, known only to the inebriated. It is a dizzying realm as vast as a galaxy, and as timeless as an all-night bender. It's the happy medium between clarity and confusion, between moderation and madness. This dimension lies between the depths of one's tolerance and the heights of drunken debauchery. Beyond the bottom of a shot glass lies the intoxication zone. Can I, can I put effects on me? Yeah, if you want to put effects, I assume you want to be in black and white. Yeah, how do I do that? Uh, <laughs> click on the three little stars there. Three little stars. Hey, viewers, we're going to have an interactive. You guys can <laughs> learn how to play Instagram with me. Oh, my God. So we are how doing I The General starring uh, Buster Keaton. Which is a nineteen twenties, uh, <laughs> this is a nineteen twenties um, silent film. <laughs> oh, how'd you get I'm, the cool stuff? I'm kind of in black and white. Yo, look at your beard. Your beard looks so nice. Well, I mean, oh, what if I just did the whole show like this? I just hello hair black and white. Black and gray. Yeah, there's there's only Stan. There's only Stan. Uh, there's only what's the song called? How uh, do I get the Serpia? Give me the Serpia. <laughs> Serpia. <laughs> Sepia. Yeah. Sepia. So Can Kalen insisted. Name? Kalen insisted that he that we do um, a black and white movie from the 1920s. So this episode's not going to be as. This song's not going to be as long. Uh, this episode's not going to be as long as it as they typically are. There is, uh, in my opinion, not a whole lot to talk about. Um, but then again, it's not one of my favorite movies um, of all time. So I don't think you're going to be able to be in black and white, bud. I think you're right. So, Kalen. Yes, Jace Man. Tell us about the movie The General starring Buster Keaton and its hijinks and shenanigans so uh, many hijinks and pratfalls. So many shenanigans. The gag count. Yo, so many gags. The gags are through the roof. Um, all right. So, one, I can't I'm gonna stress get enough. Hold on. Can I, can I say one thing? Can I say one thing? You're. This is your show, buddy. The first. This first week. Hey. You're. Is it? Hey, when's your actual birthday? Land. I've, I've okay. Take it over. This month is Kalen's month. It's called. Uh, hold on. I have the name for it. It's called Kalen's choices. Yeah, it's not my name. <laughs> Kalen's choices. It's like a Sophie's choice, but way more, way more the horrible. <laughs> I, I didn't no, there's called, a there's called, a little uh, bit called, of um there's a little bit of um uh connection. A little bit. A little bit. Called, there's a little bit. It's called, it's called Kalen's Cavalcade. Kalen's Cavalcade. Exactly. Five straight weeks of this version of Kalen on the show. Um hopefully you're not gonna get birthday drunk every week, but uh here here he is. No, When's your actual today. birthday? When's your today. actual birthday? Today? today. Well happy, happy birthday. birthday. Like actually Welcome. today. That's fucking awesome. I didn't know that. I'm getting super drunk. But I'm well, not gonna get every drunk. I'm not gonna get drunk every night. I mean I'm not gonna well, get this... drunk every night. <laughs> okay. That's probably a good idea. That's uh, probably a good idea. Don't get drunk every drunk. So Exactly. Well, I will not get weak every We lost drunk. We lost a follower somehow. We always have three. There's only two people in here now. We had six before. But that means we have yeah. at least one. It's Brian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian. Our biggest Turn fan. My hat. I'm a little upset about my hat. I want a better hat. 
So why don't we go? Okay. Gentlemen. Okay, okay wait uh, one second. Let me ask you guys a question. Hmm? So, D, I think you already answered this question. I think he warned us. He did warn us. That you saw <laughs> Bus I think you said that you saw some Buster King because of some school. Jace man, yeah. have you ever seen Buster King before? Uh, when you first got into Buster Keaton, you bought a DVD set from HMV, and we watched some at your place when we lived on um, when we lived in that building. Yeah. So that was the first and last time until today <laughs> that I uh, have watched any Buster Keaton, except I have seen many of his, his of his great stunts. Uh, one such being, I think, is the house front falling over. And yeah. then going through the window. That's a classic a Buster Keaton. I think every... a lot no, of the he could have. He could have died <laughs> very easily. Not if you use math. You can't die. If yeah, you but use math. That's fair. But even if you use math, the, no, that's the... the crew of the Challenger. Ooh, too soon, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> oh, Steve, shit. you're you're you my buddy the on 90s? this one. Steve, you're my buddy on this one. I know. I'm pretty sure you told me. You had to learn about them. Oh yeah. You know what? Okay. Can you tell me? Can you tell me why? Why did Chaplin get more shine than Buster? Um. Why did he get more shine? I don't think that. I think that Charlie Chaplin's movies are more recognized, like overall globally. Um, yeah. But. He was also not strictly an American filmmaker. He was also an entertainer in, you know, England before America. Do you know the answer? Is it... <laughs> Did I just get schooled? No, is this an opinion? Is that your opinion, Kalen? Or when you, when you phrased the question, it sounded like you Well, knew okay, it. so I guess, like, I guess what I wanted to do, what I wanted to try and start was... Um, we Let's should have done this on Friday night. Silent. Let's talk about silent people. Oh. Um, Charlie Chaplin definitely had more reputation. Yeah. But I personally like um, Buster Keaton a lot more. Well, the Buster Keaton, Keaton also doesn't play the same character in every movie that he's in, whereas Charlie Chaplin always... You would only recognize him really for his tramp role that he plays, like... If you see Charlie Chaplin when he's not in that character persona, it's like Mr. Bean. Like you, you immediately recognize. No, but well, okay. So that's the thing that you just said it. You just said it. I was like, oh man, I want to do this, but I want to do this like modern. And then I was like, wait a second, Mr. Bean. Like Mr. Bean already did it. I like, and now yeah. I feel like I feel sad. I feel sad that I can't do anything, but I want to. Do you want to make silent movies? Is that what you're saying? Do you want to be Mr. Bean? Because Buster Keaton wasn't really a Mr. Bean. He was very straight-faced, like you say, he's a stone-faced killer or whatever. And he, the story was very modern, and the movie was very modern, for what it's worth. And Charlie so, Chaplin let's, movies let's are him basically Mr. Magooing his way through different situations. And girls, like, fawning and him not, he's too dumb to realize. Like, exactly. but Buster Keaton was he like, he was going shot. after ladies. He got shunned you know, by the lady. Well, the first lady, but then that next lady that he saved was like, I love you, Buster Keaton. That was the same lady. The same lady. Yeah. Same <laughs> the lady. Same I, was, I was paying 100% attention, don't worry. Yeah, she doesn't go with him because he can't join the army, and then she gets kidnapped, and he has to go across enemy lines to save her, and then he becomes part of the army at the end, and then they get married, I guess, on the train. <laughs> right. Like okay, the train okay, bits okay, in this movie okay. were hands down the best, and there were some pretty good, like crazy war scenes, which must have been revolutionary for the time. Yeah, the this is this based on actually, some real yeah, shit. Period, and... like, it was in 1926, right? And the budget for this movie was seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is like holy shit. Wow. They do destroy a bridge with like a full size train on on it, so you're like, okay, I'm gonna destroy say a lot of that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Kalen's doing a reverse Buster Keaton right now. <laughs> He's never happy. I don't know. He's... 
My favorite part of the whole movie was when he holds up the picture of him in front of the train and just the look on his face. It, like, that was expert comedy, I thought. Expert dry comedy. Yeah, I think there's quite a few good gags in this movie. Um, I think my favorite one was when he's like, we got to hide you. I'm going to put you in this bag of shoes. And then he loses one of his <laughs> shoes in the bag of shoes. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good bit. I like it. <laughs> the sword falling off classic um also the cra- the craziest like he directed the movie he also started the movie but he also did all his own stunts like he's just stunting his way across this train over and over again and you're like if he died or got severely injured during the making of this movie <clears throat> can't yeah. replace him yeah he was like an acrobat. There's one moment where they're lining up to get enlisted, and he keeps cutting in line, <laughs> which was also hilarious to me. But he does the first time he does it, he jumps, he runs across like three tables, like it's nothing. And I was like, that you know, that's foreshadowing what's to come in this movie because then he, the whole scenario where he's moving the planks out of the way with all these elaborate. Uh, uh, tricks and elaborate stunts I thought was next level. So is this the first time you've seen this movie, Jason? I Like I said, I've only seen <clears throat> I've only seen like very little Buster Keaton. I don't, I've never watched well, this, this is, whole movie. Yeah. This is one of the movies that like when it originally came out it was sort of panned as being whatever. Like, didn't make a lot of money. Didn't get a, a huge return. People didn't budget. like it. They didn't like it. Yeah, but then like, you know, decades passed and people reevaluated it based on a true story like based on i think something called like the memoirs case or something which was like a real story that took place during the war and when he originally was trying to get the movie made he got such a large budget because people thought it was gonna be like a historical documentation of something that happened but then he's like no it's a comedy and they're like it's oh. a comedy <laughs> i'm <laughs> I'm Seth Rogen of yeah. the 20s. <laughs> I was looking at some reviews of the movie, and like one of them was like one stars. And he's like, this movie's not funny at all. And I'm like, you probably would have liked it if James <laughs> Frank was in it. <laughs> if there was no other comedies ever in existence, and this was the movie that was the first, like basically the first big budget comedy, you would have been like, wow, that was the fucking funniest thing I've ever seen. And then there, there were like 10 movies a year in the 20s, if that, probably less. So, <laughs> also like filmmaking, the further back you go, the less things are very clearly defined by genre, and the more everything tries to encapsulate as much as they can within a single film. So, like, there's a time where a musical is also a drama, is also a horror, is also an action, and they're all in one thing. And it was like, it's Hollywood. That's what we do. We we just make big <laughs> people. And uh, it wasn't until we like, mashed it all together. Yeah, it wasn't until like the fifties where that it started to sort of splinter, and these larger genres kind of niched off into stuff you know now. Horror wasn't really a huge thing until um, I mean, horror was always sort of a thing, but like it was very specific. But it also encapsulated a bunch of the other genre stuff. And then once you get to like the seventies, when you know, like we did Halloween last week, Halloween kind of splintered horror into sort of like now there's a, a slashers on genre and that's oh uh, what if what if we what if what if we're in a loop what if we're looping what if we're closing the loop what if what if you're a looper i'm a looper what if we're loopers what if what if we just close the loop what if oh my god like oh we, the guy with the shit he killed them and now we're and now we recognize it and now we're thinking about it, and then it happens at the same time that it happens, and then it's like closing the loop. Tune in next week for our discussion on the movie Looper. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that film. This is a completely different film. That's not the movie Looper, starring uh, Bruce Willis and. Also, Looper, oh. good movie, I like it, but I haven't seen it in a while. So they played with their nose. How do you want to play with your nose? What? <laughs> I don't understand. This is getting more and more confusing by the moment. They had a nose. Did you not see him with the nose? Whose nose? Oh, gentlemen, 
So, gentlemen, uh, cheers. <laughs> oh yes, cheers. This is my favorite. This is my favorite episode. This is episode one twelve, I, I believe, and we did it. We 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 did close the loop. Yeah. <clears throat> What am I supposed to do? Say no? I don't think so. <laughs> Gentlemen, I can't even tell you about. I took notes. I took a bunch of notes, but you know what? I'm not going to remember any of them. Well, you, you read them off the paper, Kalen. That's why you take the notes. I'll tell you the note that I took. I, wrote them. I took exactly That's one why note. I write them. Hilarious when he shows a picture of himself in front of the train. The 1920s had frontier towns and big cities, and big cities. So people are dressed well with this hilarious, like, cowboy Jason background. Man, you're dressed well. well Give me the top camera. Give me the top camera, Jason Man. Give me the what? Give me the top camera. Top camera? He wants to be that. on the top of the screen. I don't know if I can. You would have to start. You would have to start the show. <laughs> <laughs> you would have to start the show from your account to do that. If we, hey, if we did, oh you. my god, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. If next week we want to do it from the actual hidden, you see this one um, Instagram account, then you could be top screen. No, it's like you do it. You got this. <laughs> so, what was your guys' review? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have some stuff to discuss, but I figured we would go through the plot, which is pretty simple. It's a man wants to join uh, the army to impress his one of his two true loves. The first love being his train or his engine, sorry, and the second. Right, being that's where the picture comes from. But her family uh, believes that in order for you to be worth her, you need to be part of the army. She wants him to be one of the southern soldiers, so he tries to. Um, he tries to, to enlist. They deny him because he's too valuable as an engineer rather than, you know, giving him that as a reason. He's confused, doesn't know why they won't accept him. He thinks maybe it's because he's too small, maybe it's because he's not beefy enough, but uh, he never really fully understands that it's because... He's, he's trying to find out why. He's an amazing engineer, which you see throughout the movie and his ability to but pilot he doesn't, a he doesn't, They don't tell him that. No. They don't. And and uh, she, she says that he's a coward for not joining. And uh, <clears throat> basically, she says, don't come back to me again until you're wearing a uniform. And then I think a year passes and her father gets injured or captured or something. So she's going to go visit him. And then she gets kidnapped by sneaky northern soldiers uh, who are disguising themselves as southern soldiers. Boom, backslide! Can I say that you have successfully interpreted the film? <laughs> so far, I'm only about a third of the way through the movie. He's uh, talked about the first act. But, yeah, the first but act. before we get into all of that, can we joke around a little bit? We're already 20 minutes into the episode, Caitlin. <laughs> Well, then it's a good thing I stopped. Oh, hello, our viewers, halfway through. It's like, oh, just wait. Wait a second. What, what, uh, with the end up? I feel like you're going to barf on your camera at some point. <laughs> Kayla, why don't you read us some of your notes, buddy? I'll tell you some notes. All right. Notes. What are we talking about? Uh, what did it say? The general. The great <laughs> stone face. All right. So we're talking about we're talking about um, what's the face? Buzz Keaton, the great stone face. Uh, let's see what he's saying. Uh, we we watched the general. Maybe we did. Did we? Yes. So, then. I had, I, w I wanted to throw you guys off, is what I wanted to do. And 
by choosing this movie? Yeah. Um, I really did. I mean, I've watched old I, movies I, before. I did, did, this movie ties into another movie, and then it also ties into another thing with another movie. And I just, I just, I, I wanted, like, so, like, the calendar has a year, right? Like, January to December, that's the year. But, like, when you guys, when when we, when anyone, when, any, when anyone's born, that's, like, your calendar or whatever, right? Like, uh, my calendar is not the same as the calendar calendar. And so, uh, <laughs> you, bring the you mean like you start your calendar started like um, November first, nineteen eighty, whatever, and that's when your calendar began. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Got it. Exactly. See, he got it. Hey, viewers. What's up? I will be actively telling people not to watch this one. <laughs> Are we talking about the thing? We've been talking about the thing, buddy. We need some. Whoa! We, didn't we talk need about some the quick thing. facts. We need some quick facts. Tell us your facts. Yo, good facts. What are we talking about? Um, you were talking about calendars. I'm not sure what that the was. The general. But... Yo, do you know what I want to? Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I wish I did? I wish I painted myself with gray, um, gray face paint or whatever. That, I wish I that seems like... like you would wake up with paint everywhere, all over literally everything <laughs> in your apartment. Imagine, imagine, imagine. Yo, imagine. <clears throat> I'm imagining it, and I'm telling you what the outcome would be. Hey, viewers! <laughs> hey, viewers out there! Imagine. I like the part when he shoots the cannon. <laughs> yeah, that was a good. That was a good moment. Um, I like because a lot of the a lot of the gags in this, I was like, oh, I hope this happens, and then it did happen. Like, when he shoots it, I'm like, oh, he didn't put enough gunpowder in there. I hope it just kind of goes into the cabin and, like, just misses Yo, it or something. Yeah, did you like, like how he was counting the gunpowder with his hands? I did. I liked that he was doing, like, an Indiana Jones thing. Like, oh, this seems like too much. And, like, pouring a little bit back in. And then just put... No, but he put, like, a little back, but not, like, enough a little back. He should have put more in. Um, yeah, a lot of the gags were just, like, weirdly like it was just like a a string of gags right which is like i know that's what buster keaton is but even in his own admission this was like sort of a passion project for him and he wanted it to be a story that was taken from reality or history books and tell that story um but unfortunately there were people who were like oh this isn't historically accurate or this isn't funny enough and it, it landed somewhere in between which is why it wasn't so well, well received at the time the thing um, that's really weird is that he told it from the South. He told it from the perspective of the South. So, like, the South is, like, kind of like the leaders of the Ku Klux or whatever, right? Like, uh, that's just kind of... It's a little bit more complicated than that, but yes, they were the ones that were trying to fight for um, their ability to to maintain human beings as property, also known as slavery, which is extremely wrong. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I think the reason for that is that the, he didn't want to just somebody, them basically like being like, you can't be in the army for us. Um, and then him being. Hey, Jake, goof- man. So. I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow my hair. I'm going to grow. Do it. Up. I've seen I'm you. I've seen to, you do that before. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to. Shame. Um. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I was just t- like, I didn't. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, with the, in the. Your plan is backfired. 
Why not? Why can't we all with the in the wool? Because that makes that doesn't that's you're not saying words. Yeah, I am. Fun fact: This movie is in over uh, six of AFI's top 100 lists. What are those lists? We've got movies, we've got comedies, we've got thrills, we've got heroes and villains list, we've got the Cheers list, tons. Steve, so that goes back. Steve, Steve, what? What can I do for you? Can you? What? What? What does it look like when you see me? What does it look like when I see you? You're kind of like weirdly yeah. backlit, so it's sort of hard to see your face, but. Oh, like in like a good way? Uh, I mean, you've got like a good uh, hard light on your side there. Yeah, your profile, we can see that nicely. But it looks like you're squinting through one eye, closing the other one tightly. Do I have a nose? You have a nose, yeah. You got a nose. Ah! <laughs> Does this help? Ah! No, it's just not changing the lighting. <laughs> Does the yelling bounce back? Ha! Uh, Johnny Gray was nominated for one of the top here. <laughs> the hero list. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew hey, this movie was hard to talk about, but I didn't know it was going to be this hard to talk about. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be hard to say any words. Um... <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Not say words? No, tell us about the movie. Say things about the movie that we reviewed. Well, oh. The general. Yeah. So, Sharon Buster Keaton. Buster Keaton. The stone faced madman right, or whatever. Let me, let, me, let me tell you. Let me give you a little some, some, some. You guys are my buddies. You guys have my back. You guys. I want you to, like, rub me on the back and tell me everything is going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. Sometimes, sometimes I'm wrong. This isn't the place for this. <laughs> You're not wrong right now. What would you be wrong about? We can just uh, talk well, about... Not the, the wrong, job. wrong, but, like, good time. We don't need to prove anything wrong. Right. So, Bus Keaton, he's the man. But, <laughs> but, he, he does not win. For some reason, he does not hold, um, like jurisdiction. What's it called when, like, you, like, uh, that's your area? What's that called? Where are the gangs and the bloods called? Where uh, are those? Crips? Crips? <laughs> are they blue? I, you mean, like, tenure? Like, last ability? Um, staying power? Um, notoriety? <laughs> I don't know. It's right. Wait, wait. One second. What? Oh, shit. Infamy? Infamy is a good one. I need a, 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 I think I know what you mean. I think what you're saying is why... Why are you able to say Charlie Chaplin's name and it immediately conjures an image in everyone's head? But if you say Buster Keaton, that same thing doesn't happen. And I think it's because he didn't have as many movies as um, Charlie Chaplin. He is not as recognizable as, as Charlie Chaplin. And he also, after this movie was such a failure, he lost his, uh, his sort of status as an independent filmmaker and he had to go back to like a very tight deal with uh, MGM, I believe. And, uh, you know what it was? He was uh, he was an alcoholic. He was I'm, not I mean, able to. Alcoholic. He was not able to profit off of his gestures. 
he allowed his whatever. Well, I mean, that being said, like his initial idea of this movie was that he believed he had taken a story from history and told it well, and it was one of his favorite movies made and decades later people agreed with him and it was one of the first movies um inducted into the um library of congress the first uh like the first titles of, of films that was inducted in what i believe I, something like that yeah I, this movie and it was it's because it's now regarded as one of the best movies ever made like period yeah i was gonna say I was like, I was pretty sure you, I thought you guys were gonna call me out, so I was gonna say, I was gonna say to you guys, ooh, well, he had this accolade and that accolade, and like there was a lot of uh, a lot of shoutouts to his style. Right. Well, I mean, I I think that people who are into film particularly are not going to be hard pressed to think of good moments. Buster Keaton movies because they'll be familiar, right? Like this movie in its own has a lot of iconography, things that you recognize that you didn't even realize. Jason, you saw it today, you said for the first time, and you probably recognized a few images, like when he's sitting the on train the train stuff. And when yep. he's like when he's hitting the log on the other log, like yep. those are things you see in like Oscar reels and stuff being like the greatest movies ever made. And it'll always have a, a couple of Buster Keaton. Um, I, mean, I just looked into it a little bit, Steve, and you were right. Basically, it was a, it comes down to Charlie Chaplin was just seen by more eyes. Buster Keaton is an American actor, and it seems like at the time, like you said, he was he tr kind of tricked the studio into making this movie, right? So, of course, he's going to have like a black mark put on his name after that. They used to they used to blackball you and kick you out of <laughs> Hollywood if they suspected suspected you were a communist yeah. so it, i can i can see when charlie chaplin is british too right so he had people watching his movies worldwide and i don't i would would assume that buster keaton movies didn't make it out of the united states uh i doubt it and i think that uh the movie made um less than five hundred thousand domestically and then the it made just over a million worldwide. So like that's the rest of the world making up a little yeah. bit. <clears throat> but usually when it goes worldwide, it, it brings in a lot more, but it didn't. Um, I don't know a huge amount about Buster Keaton's like personal life outside of like his film life. But you know, that being said, the amount of notoriety that someone like Charlie Chaplin has, it's like, I know all, all about his like weird gross life that he had. And I don't really know anything about Buster Keaton. Other than yeah. That, I mean, you know, Accomplished stuntman, actor, and director. Look at modern day actors who, like Robert Downey Jr., who famously played Chaplin, had a very interesting career where he was a huge star in the early 90s, then went away for a decade because of his, his uh, home life. You know? Yeah. Came back, at least became a bigger people. star. Yeah. That rarely, that rarely happens. Look at Chris Evans. He was in literally in not another teen movie and in shitty rom-coms and in co like comedies and stuff. They, they, you know, he plays, um, he plays the second or third boyfriend in Scott Pilgrim. So you see that he could play that, you know, that chin character. They put blonde hair on him and then he plays fucking Johnny Storm in two movies. And they're like, mm, that's not quite it. And he puts on the weight becomes Captain America Boom, megastar. So I guess you know Buster Keaton never. They he he didn't. Ironically, reinvent himself enough times for Charlie Chaplin. You know, with one note for his whole career, like Laurel and Hardy are, are the same kind of thing where they're just a comedy duo who did the same thing for their whole career. Um, Abbott and Costello are another duo who did the same shit for their whole career. They were the care. If you were going to see that it, 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 nowadays, it's a lot like Tyler Perry and Medea. Where people don't when people, when Tyler Perry shows up in a movie, he's a great actor. And when he shows up in a movie, people I like don't realize it's him because they think he's the Medea guy. Yeah, and well, that you, made, know, you don't recognize him because he's not playing Medea. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So now it, it, back then there wasn't as much. The pool wasn't as big, and 
and Charlie Chaplin really just had more eyes on him. And that's why Buster Keaton, and like Kalen said a minute ago, I guess I guess if he had some home life problems, much like Robert Downey Jr., but, you know, careers were shorter and life expectancy was shorter and there was no help and mental health issues weren't dealt with properly. They weren't dealt with properly 10 years ago, let alone, they're still not, let alone, you know, 70 years ago. So, yeah. And like alcoholism was just like, oh, he died of the drink. Yeah, he, he got the he got the tremens. <laughs> got the old gin shakes, and he just couldn't keep it together after that. <laughs> yeah, like that guy needed help for his whole life. <laughs> so I think that's I didn't know Buster Keaton had a had a, had a drinking thing. I didn't know that either, actually. But uh, <clears throat> like I said, I didn't. I don't know a lot about his personal life. I I know enough about his filmmaking to be able to have a an hour-long discussion about one movie of his, but... Um, have we been, I, have I, we been playing this funny. whole time? Sorry? Yeah, we're 40 have minutes had... into a show here. <laughs> um, yeah, like I, I said, like Kaylin mentioned earlier, I, I saw this movie for the first time um, about, like, 14, 15 years ago when I was in university for the film program that I was in. And we watched a bunch of very early classics, but this is one of the only ones that really stuck in my brain in terms of that iconography that I was mentioning before. <clears throat> because it is funny. Like you're, it's not like gut-bustingly hilarious where I'm slapping my knee throughout the entire thing, but I am watching it and being like, ah, I like that gag. Oh, his top hat got caught in the tree. Funny. Like, well, it had a lot of it had a lot of things that transcend the era. It's like I just watched the new Dune movie. And, you know, on paper, it's the same as the David Lynch movie, almost beat for beat. And a lot of he, they redid a lot of the scenes from the David Lynch movie. But there's an indescribable difference when you do things well and you make the iconography and the cinematography in this movie were outstanding. This movie, I watched it on fucking YouTube and it looked like it was 1080p and and Buster Keaton, the makeup that they use on Buster Keaton's face, and you can see it in the pictures. They make him more stone faced. I think. I think they put they they, you know, they do his eyes, they pale him up a bit, and and the comedy is coming from him not reacting to anything, and that style of comedy persists today, like to this day. You see, you see the straight man, and he's the straight man in that universe instead of Charlie Chaplin being the bumbling buffoon, the tramp. The he's more of a Mr. Bean, where um, uh, Buster Keaton is more of a Jackie Chan. I would say. Yeah, I like mean, to make that parallel. I would say, yeah. I mean, obviously not as spectacular, but for 1926, the stuff that he was doing, I cringed a couple times being like, oh my God, if he like, missteps once, he's going to break all of his He's going to die. It, it, the train could have killed him at any moment in a lot of scenes. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you guys I love you? Yes. yes. <laughs> we love you too, buddy. <laughs> Happy birthday. Well, we... It, no, no, we got no. this. I'm gonna like. I'm gonna. I'm gonna surpass a whole bunch of like uh, living force field around us. That's good. It's good to have a force right field. Now. Do you have a favorite Big ass force field in the movie? Like a favorite gag? Go on. Do you have a favorite? <laughs> it sounds like a. Doesn't sound like it. Do you have a favorite part of the movie, Kalen? What? The yeah. Movie, the general. What are we talking about? The movie? The general. The general. The movie. The general. Yeah. Do you have a favorite <sighs> moment, like a like a slapstick moment, or a favorite moment? In the movie? Okay. One of my favorite things. I'll tell you what. One of my favorite thing was when he's on the uh, the Train? gear. The the thing, the yeah, thing. the locomotive, the, the loco part. You know the the thing, the thing that moves. The 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 arm that moves the wheels. The gear, the, arm. the gear. The, sure. I think the gear hey. is the thing on the train track that actually switches it to I another track. I think it's a gear. Blues. I see you, Jimmy Blues. Look at the alcohol content on this. It's like... Tyler says, like, 0. 0.5. 
Is it point five? It's four percent. And it's Monday night, and I'm having this beer and another beer for the second half of the show. You. Let's have some some alcohol. What language is that? It's it's alcohol language. Um. I like that he gets inducted into his lieutenant status at the end. That was nice. Even though it was for horrific people. Yep. We're just supposed to say no. But like, look, they're gonna. Um, yeah, I think my favorite gag was nah. probably the, the, the shoe. But I did like... Uh, that he keeps kind of getting mad at the woman for dumb stuff. I don't know what her name is. I can't remember. Um, I only remember his name because he says it twice, and it's literally written on the screen every time. So I'm like, ah, yes, Johnny Gray. Um, <clears throat> but she does a thing where she ties a rope, and he's like, it's, it's, it's Annabelle Lee. Lee. Annabelle Lee. Uh, she's supposed to be like the daughter, of, like of General Lee. Yeah. Is that what this movie's about? <laughs> oh my god. We need to go back in time and nap off. <laughs> the stone faced ice man. That's the stone faced. Hey, we're gonna have a stone face. Um, <clears throat> well, I think that, uh, I, I think there's a few other silent films that I would consider doing on this show, but they are kind of hard to discuss because often they are extremely, um, linear and n- not complicated. And it's usually just a flat story. Like this is the story. This is the beginning, this is the middle, this is the end. Um, And there's not a lot of complexity to them, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But (laughs) if you think that it's like akin to, you you put the movie in and you you pretty quickly realize what's going to play out, especially the older it is, because like these are tropey things now where it's like, oh yeah, it's very predictable. But it's like, yeah, but you know, in 1926 when it came out, maybe not as predictable or maybe that's exactly just for giving people exactly what they wanted kind of thing. But look at, like, like once it goes into silent film, they do kind of a hard reboot, and then movies are still boring for a while. Well, not boring. By today's standard, they're boring. But by the then, now the big thing is they ha- you can hear everything that's happening. You can hear the talking. You can hear the sound effects. Um, but, you know, horror movies and B-movies from the 1940s, uh, and most movies from the 1940s I, that I've watched, I've been very much like, this is very much like three acts, um, you know, a tight ninety minutes, um, and that's it. And and you get you just get you, you go to the movie to see the stars. You I, I don't think it's about the plot until the sixties, the fifties and sixties. It's well, more the spectacle. <clears throat> and like the most experimental silent era stuff is not in the United States. Everything in the United States is very cookie cutter. Like this is Hollywood, the silver screen, a place where stars are born. But you go to, like, Germany or France, and it's all, like, very, um, it's very experimental. There's one, oh, my God, I had to study it, and I cannot remember what it's called. Uh, the Petit Jambon. <laughs> the, 1920, the 1927 French epic. Speaking of silent films, it's great that this episode has had so much uh, silence in it. Yep. <laughs> yes, Are we still talking about the thing? Yeah, uh, for, we got yeah. about five more minutes. Oh, no. What the... Kayla, do you have any do you have any more trivia trivia facts for us? I have a lot of, I have a lot of trivia facts. Okay, hit us with one. 
ओके इट्स हैविंग um sorry how it up to us last week by close i was trying to find the list of all the like entry level film course stuff cuz usually the way it it started for us was like you started very early on it's like this is the history of cinema these are the biggest movies that people still talk about to to, to this day um this movie being one of them that's what i do um yep. there's this one what i was getting at, at was like there's a lot of weird french and german experimental film and like even as early as um uh, man i'm fucking around with that french and german in that french shit what exactly <laughs> viewers hey viewers hey viewers he's talking to you brian <laughs> uh, the movie uh in shen on the lu is a movie that i watched it was made in 1929 and it is wild like it's it's just a lot of images being shown over and over again but they keep showing this woman where she goes to get her eye in half with a razor blade Steve. and you they, it's yes Steve. yes are you are you trying to tell me that you've like watched my like my shit i've watched your shit Have you enjoyed the silent era? Yeah, I I I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the silent era. I've had to like really like I I've had to watch a lot of it for school, but I I haven't revisited most of it because a lot of the time when you're doing that stuff, you have to sit there and analyze it and like write papers on it and discuss it in small groups and large groups and trying to uh explain yeah. how it feel and think so i've i've been exposed to a lot of it but uh what i'm Steve, trying to say is that the, the difference the difference between american silent film and the rest of the silent film that was happening at the same time uh is vastly different yes what else did you Steve 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 yeah. Steve yes. Steve yes what do we have great old time We are. I'm just trying to make sure that this episode has information in it. <laughs> so, <laughs> if people ever decide to yep. watch it, they'll have some information. They don't even know. They don't even know. Yo, Steve. Yeah. Steve. So, um, this, this let's uh, talk about our um, let's talk about our ratings for this movie and take her home. Um I just wanted to before we <clears throat> ended here I just wanted to go over that um I I actually enjoyed the film. I thought it was good. I I liked I like Buster Keaton's face. Like I like his look. I love that uh his ability to just not react to anything and everything is kind of just happening to him. Um I really enjoyed his character and I really like I said the the movie looks great even today and I think that comes from the way that filming on um actual film you can upscale a lot easier than filming with digital if you look at a lot of the movies that have been filmed digitally they do not hold up looking at you the matrix movies um <laughs> but uh but at the end of the day i'm going to give this movie a 3 and a pretty solid 3 because i think that if you are a fan of cinema you should watch this movie pretty much Um yeah, I think that I am more or less in the same ballpark in terms of uh how I feel <laughs> about this movie in terms of watch- watchability. I think it's it's good. Like it's not it's not when you're watching you're not like uh I got to slog through this movie that was made 100 years ago. <laughs> uh, like literally. But uh there's a lot of good slapstick. There's a lot of good planned out stunts and gags. The story is pretty predictable but at the same time compelling enough that you're like I kind of want to see how he gets rid of these guys or where is this going to go after this and how does it end um when I watched it the first time uh, over like 15 years ago at this point uh I remember being impressed by everything just the just from thinking about the fact that like holy moly nowadays like if you if you're an actor you've got like five stuntmen if you're a director you're never anywhere near anything dangerous 
And this guy is just jumping from train car to train car, throwing logs to stop derailed trains. There's live fire everywhere <laughs> constantly. And it's like, yeah, you think about the limitations of the time and what they accomplished. It's pretty amazing. Um, not the grandest spectacle you'll ever see, but there are some pretty cool things that uh, are impressive even to this day. Um, I mentioned the the bridge collapse with the train at the end is pretty is pretty pretty well done. Um, I'll I'll give it a three as well, um, and that's coming from somebody with a modern perspective looking at it as a movie watching it today. Um, if I had a time machine and a brain time machine that made me think like a nineteen twenty person, I'd probably think it was great. I would probably think I would probably think this was a five because like I'm I I'm, I love comedy today so I probably would have still loved comedy back back then even though everything was super depressing all the time and smelly um, but this would have been a great escape for uh, 89 minutes on a Friday night or whenever they watched movies in a hundred years ago um, and I would have worn my best my best suit to, to the to the theater um, I would have taken my best gal. And I uh, would have uh, eaten some popcorn. They probably still have popcorn then. No, they had like marmalade. <laughs> <laughs> they had co- Coca Cola that was ninety percent cocaine. Uh, yeah. You would have liked any. You would have enjoyed anything. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. Um, so, I, uh, you mentioned the runtime. It doesn't feel as long as it is. No. Uh, which is Not good. That's a good sign of any movie. <laughs> It has very distinct parts. Like it, I've watched some movies from the 1940s where I was like, hey, where is this going? And it, then it doesn't go anywhere or it, it's stupid. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh my God. <laughs> Get yeah, to the point. Fun. Just watch the 70s vo- version with, uh, what's his face? Donald Sutherland? Uh, Kalen. Let, give let's uh, yes. let's close it out. Give us give us your rating for this movie and your final thoughts. Well, what can I say? We go on a journey. We we have fun with this this sad clown. This sad clown prances around, and we join him throughout this journey. And what am I supposed to do? Not not not. Not join them. We're not supposed to have a fun time. I don't. Do you have a rating or? Hey, look at that cool ass mask. I'm the bat. I'm the reverse Batman, just like you're the reverse Buster Keaton. What was your rating for the movie? Uh, you know what? I wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to introduce you guys to Buster Keaton. That's what I wanted to do. And Steve, I didn't realize, even before all of this, I didn't realize Steve is the man. Thank you. That's what. That's why I wasn't like. That's why I was immediately like, "Yes, yeah, Steve should be doing this project with us because he's he knows what he's talking about." Not all the time. But, but... I want to have fun too. <sighs> You're having fun, buddy. That's why I was so harsh on you in the opening bit. We just had to fit no, some. We just had to like fit some of that lame man. trivia in there. Like Steve is the man. Steve is the man. Thank you. Hey, uh, you know, uh, what's the, what's the, in the... Don't worry. It, Still don't um, know what you mean by that. Wednesday, <laughs> when it's my birthday, I will be talking about a movie, and I'll be just as uh, drunk, probably. And that's something I wanted to bring up with you guys off camera, but uh, this, uh, we're, Kaylin has given it a five, I assume. So <laughs> we're going to... And this very special uh, part, hey, did you see this one? And half, uh, hey, did you see this one after show, usually reserved for when we do a Friday or Saturday night show. Um, for everyone, I'm Jason. You guys don't need to do the thing. Uh, but Steve, you do, do I do that. Hey. All right. Hey. Hey, for, for Jason and Steve, <laughs> I'm me. And I have a hat. And it's great. <laughs> so it's Steve, I'm Jason.
Uh, for Kalen and Jason, I'm Steve. And hey, did you see this one? I hey. bet you did. For the rest of the month, for more of Kalen's Cavalcade. Kalen's Cavalcade, where we tell them to take it down seven notches out of a possible 17 notches. But thank so you for watching. Get turned down. This has been um, one of our more, more memorable episodes. And uh, Brian, uh, you may as well just join the show. <laughs> have a have a happy uh, no, no not November, and we'll see you uh, next week. And happy birthday, Kaylin! And happy it's birthday. a ha happy birthday to you. You're older now uh, and wiser, and we love you. And get a get your vaccine. Okay, have a good one. There is a fifth dimension beyond sobriety, known only to the inebriated. It is a dizzying realm as vast as a galaxy, and as timeless as an all-night bender. It's the happy medium between clarity and confusion, between moderation and madness. This dimension lies between the depths of one's tolerance and the heights of drunken debauchery. Beyond the bottom of a shot glass lies the intoxication zone.